Hi guys, Anton here from Automate Opponent. In this video, I will explain how to use the lazy voting design pattern in automated tests to delay the finding of web elements until we need it. I wrote a detailed article about it, so I recommend to check it after watching the video. There is a link at the bottom of the article where you can download a source code that I, I will demonstrate. Now let's review uh, what problem we have and then try to solve it. Imagine that we have this imaginary website for selling croquettes. In this shop, uh, we are the QA and we need to create automated tests for creating a purchase. I will uh, quickly remind what we did uh, in the past article for adapter design pattern. If you haven't checked the video, please uh, do so because we will extend uh, our previous solution. But don't worry, I will explain shortly what we did before uh, so that you are aware uh, how we extend it. So our website uses latest um, web technologies such as, uh, for example, uh, when you click here, we use asynchronous requests instead of rewarding um, the whole page. Then we need to click view card. And imagine that today we have a birthday. So we received a discount coupon uh, for our birthday. We apply the coupon, waiting again for the spinner to uh, disappear. And we have additional budget, so we want to purchase actually two rockets. We need to update the card. Again, wait for the, all of the requests to finish. Then we need to click to the proceed to checkout button. And finally, wait for this page to load and to fill all billing details here and click the place order. Now let's review our previous solutions. Uh, in the previous video, we looked um, at how we can use the adapter design pattern to solve this problem um, better. But let's first review the straightforward approach. First, I, um, I created um, .NET Core library and installed a few NuGet packages. I installed Microsoft.NET Test SDK and the two, the two NuGet packages about MS Test. And then we have uh, three additional packages, one for the Selenium web driver, one from the, for the Chrome driver, and we have this helper, uh, weight helpers. And um, I created this test class. This is our first, first version of um, this shopping cart test. Here we use a uh, native iWeb driver. Uh, we hold it uh, in a variable. Uh, then before each test in the test initialize method, this is called uh, out before each test method, before each test, we initialize the, uh, the Chrome driver and we close the browser uh, during the test cleanup phase, which is executed after each test. And in the test, we navigate to our web shop. We find the different elements. We perform the different actions like clicking, typing, and so on. In order to handle the uh, page loads and the asynchronous requests, uh, we actually use hard-coded pauses, which is as you probably know, it's uh, not a good practice because sometimes they may be, may be enough, but sometimes the test may fail because actually you, you needed to wait for six seconds, not for five and so on. And um, the total summary, uh, the total sum of the pauses here is equal to something like 35 seconds. The better approach that I showed you in the previous video is to use the adapter design pattern. Let's uh, quickly review uh, the UML class diagram. Instead of using plain web driver, we um, actually have this new interface, simplified interface. Uh, as you can see here, we have this iWebDriver interface. Uh, on purpose, I haven't included all of the properties and methods, but it's much bigger. Uh, we have this iDriver, which is the, actually an interface for the web driver adapter, and it includes uh, less properties, only the, uh, and less methods, only the one that we need. Uh, we have this find element, find elements, 
Goto URL and the new wait for Ajax uh, that we uh, will use in the tests to wait for the asynchronous requests. Then we have the adapter class, which is actually something like a wrapper that implements this iDriver interface that change a bit how we uh, write tests, basically. Um, we use composition design principle to hold the iWebDriver uh, actual instance. And we implement all of these new methods. Uh, I will show in a bit the actual implementation. Then again, uh, these find elements actually don't find element and find elements actually don't return directly uh, the vanilla web driver iWeb element interface, but instead uh, we have defined a new interface called iElement that again uh, have a little bit different methods like type text instead of clear and send keys. Uh, and also have additional property called by that, that it's how we find actually the, uh, the element. And then we have this element adapter that again holds, uh, uses composition principle, holds here, uh, holds here the instance of the actual iWeb element because it's something like a wrapper. And we have this implementation of this methods. And in the test, we use uh, the not directly uh, the vanilla web driver interfaces, but instead we use our adapter interfaces. So let me quickly show you the code. Uh, again, here, this is the simplified interface for the driver. This is the simplified interface uh, that holds uh, you know, the locator and provides this type text function. And this is the actual implementation. We implement this iDriver interface. We use the composition to hold uh, in private read only variable the actual web driver that we wrap. And the magic is happening inside uh, the find element and find element methods where in order to remove the hard coded pauses, uh, we use the native web driver wait class uh, that will wait in a loop for a particular condition to happen. In our case, it will wait for uh, the elements with this locator to appear. And then when we retrieve the element or elements, we return them as element adapter uh, or actually our wrapper. And the same is happening in the element adapter. Uh, the only difference is that, uh, as mentioned, we have this new method type text, where instead of writing each time clear and send keys, uh, we just use the better name type text. And another improvement is that in the click method, we first wait for the element to be clickable using again the web driver wait helper that comes from the Selenium extras wait helpers, because sometimes you know, the element may be there, but uh, not be in a clickable state. So we first wait for the element to be clickable and then we click it. And in the constructor, since here, uh, the, the native element is already found, we assign this to our new locator property. And here is how our test looks now. Instead of using the iWebDriver interface, we use the iDriver. Uh, this is our adapter interface. And to it, we assign uh, the actual driver adapter. And to the constructor, we pass actually the real home driver that we wrap. This is uh, executed before each test. We open the browser. And after each test, during the test cleanup phase, we close the browser. And when you navigate to the page, we again use uh, this find element, which actually returns uh, our adapter element, as you can see, I element, which means that inside this method, we will wait for the element to appear, then we will return it and wrap it into the element adapter class. And when you perform the click, you actually will execute the click of the element adapter. And the thing that we want to achieve is that right now, 
when you call find element, the driver and driver adapter will go directly to the page to find the element. Instead, um, another usage is that today I will show you the lazy loading design pattern and how we can improve our um, adapter solution so that you can write something like you can define the different elements before and then use the actions. Let me show you directly uh, the result. If we use the lazy loading, then you can create all of the elements here. And actually this create method won't go directly and find the element. Instead, it will wait. This is why it's called lazy loading. It will wait uh, the finding. Actually, the actual finding of the element is happening when you perform a particular action against this adapter or element. So if you want, let, um, let's see the difference between the two approaches. First, uh, let's look uh, at the driver adapter. What have changed? Again, we use the, uh, you know, a private variable as composition for the iWeb driver and we pass it through the constructor. However, we rename the find element since actually you are not finding it anymore with the lazy loading, you are creating the adapter. Uh, so this means that in the create method, you just return the I element, which is the interface for the element adapter, and you provide the locator in the driver. The same is valid for the create elements. Actually, you can see here that we have a new thing that um, in the previous example, we find all of the elements, wait for them, and return them as element adapters. But in order to achieve the, you know, uh, lazy loading, we need additional adapter for element, for collection of elements. This is why I created this um, element list interface that I will show you in a minute. Actually, uh, nothing else have changed here in the driver adapter. This is the only change here. So let's review the new uh, I element list. The I element list um, implements I numerable from I element, which means that you can use the element collection in for each statement. And then we have this index. You can uh, use the index to access, for example, the third element from the collection. Then you have this count. And this, um, instead of writing normal for each, you can use this method um, using this action delegate using one the expressions to access the elements. I will show you in a bit. And let's review the actual implementation. Um, as you can see here, uh, we implement this I element list. Uh, we use composition to hold the actual driver and uh, there is a new service called element finder service that i will show you in a minute but here the element list uh, holds again the actual locator for finding all of these elements part of this collection then we implement the i numerable um, the actual magic is happening in this get and wait web driver elements method where we return a collection i numerable from uh, the interface of our adapter. The thing that we do is that first we use our element finder service to locate, uh, as you can see here, we return the native web driver elements and then we wrap them uh, in element adapters that later on uh, they will use again uh, lazy loading when you perform the action and find the, the element again. And we use yield return, meaning that if you, uh, for example, break the fridge, uh, you won't go and create all the element adapters. And now let's review. There is no change in the I element list interface. Uh, the actual change is here in the element adapter. Um, it uses the same I element finder service. Uh, this is a new service that I actually moved the logic for uh, waiting for elements to appear and returning them. 
it's basically uses again composition to hold the web driver weight. Uh, we created it, uh, you know, in the constructor. And here we use these helpers again to wait for a particular element to appear uh, and here for the collection of elements. So we use this um, in both in the element adapter and in the element collection adapter. Uh, we assign it here uh, in the constructor. And what else? Um, we have this public property that it's not part of the adapter interface called native web element, where we actually perform the finding um, of the actual vanilla web driver element. And everywhere before where um, we actually called our find function um, and called our, you know, because before uh, we used composition to hold the actual reference against the native element because it was previously found. But right now, instead we use this property where we find the element each time. And when you call the text, it, uh, it will go and call the element finder to locate the element and so on and so on. For example, when you want to click, it will call the element finder, it will wait for the element to appear, and then it will wait for it to be clickable, and then it will click it. Um, and again, uh, you can extend this solution by adding some kind of a caching algorithm. For example, instead of calling every time and finding the element. Um, you can, for example, the first time when you uh, find it, return it instead of uh, directly calling this every time. And this is how um, later on, when you create an element, you won't go directly and find it. Instead, when you call the click, it will go to the property that calls the element finder and the actual element will be created here. And this makes uh, actual use case, actual test case more visible what is happening. Again, this is not the best practice. Uh, in the real world, you use patterns such as page objects, facades, strategies, etc., to and not hold all of the you know, uh, plain elements here. But anyway, this is, um, again, very useful pattern for delaying the finding of the elements. If you have any comments or questions, you can ask them uh, on the Automate Opponent Forum. And for more automation about design patterns, please check the automateopponent.com. Thank you for watching.